Greetings survivors and friends, Shadow Frax here once more to dump a steaming informational mound firmly in the centre of your driveway, and do I have a mound for you? Most of my time writing this one up's been spent trying to decide exactly what to mention and what to leave for later, as the team have been on a quality of life crusade over the last week it seems. I think I'll concentrate on what I most fancy mentioning first and work backwards from there if that's okay with you. And in the meantime, if you're enjoying the ride, please leave a like and sub to the channel if you aren't already on board. Talking of rides, one of the most interesting new things on the staging branch, I think, is work to add code locks to cars that you'll be able to attach via a lift. And at the moment, the car will also need to be on a lift to set or change the code. This will completely replace the existing key lock method, with only one lock per vehicle needed to rule them all. And I know that this has been a hot request for the longest time. So tell me what you think of this one, and what else you'd like to be able to put code locks on if you could. Over in the electrical department, some new wire colours are being added. Light blue, orange, pink, purple and white. And if you look at a wire's input or output nodes and press R with your wire tool out, you'll be able to change that wire's colour to the currently selected one. Oh, behave! A number of small electrical items like switches, splitters, etc. will also be soon stackable to five, and SAM sites are getting a pass-through, which means you could chain multiple together. But of course, at your own risk. That way, if the first ones destroy, they'll go offline. It'll probably be more useful just to use this to link them to Rust Plus to know when one loses power. Also, something I think is really cool that I've been asking about for a few years now is the ability to eat foods such as corn, pumpkins, and mushrooms, etc., straight off the ground without having to pick them up first. This is a method horses have known about for donkey's years, of course, and it is a fresher way to eat after all. Now, apart from still being able to pick them up in the usual way, you'll also be able to hold E whilst looking at one to open a new pie menu, which lets you choose what you want to do. Of course, all pro seeds will still go to your inventory. Over to building now, and quite a few things here are subject to change. You'll soon be able to rotate roof blocks manually before placement, and you'll be able to rotate external gates and walls in 90 degree increments instead of 180. There's also a plan to add a debris blocker for these to stop players spamming down new ones during a raid. Garage doors will be pick upable without needing a hammer out, they'll just be the same as other doors now. Both armoured doors are being buffed from 800 to 1000 HP each really like to know what you think of this one. Oh, and upkeep time will now display days remaining as well instead of just more than 72 hours. Stone spears are going to be 30 stone cheaper now and take only 10 seconds to craft. I guess you learned how to be less wasteful finally. They're also being removed from elite and hackable crates, and the miner's hat had all its protection values increased. It looks like pump jacks and quarries are being switched over to use diesel instead of low grade. Production rates are also being adjusted, but these are subject to change too at the moment. And as part of this, barrels of the black stuff are being added as spawns to water treatment, power plant, mill tunnels, junkyard, and airfield. Storage on a few vehicles is being upped. Balloons, boats, and subs are all getting an extra six slots. Heli crate loot tables are being tweaked to make them more rewarding, such as reducing the chance of lower tier weapons and just getting single laptop CCTVs and MLRS rockets. Only a single underwater lab will spawn now instead of three, but this is more likely to be a larger one with more puzzles. Cargo ship events will be less frequent, and oil rig reset time is being increased, although I'm not sure what to at the moment. Oh yes, rowboats will now automatically dismount you if they get flipped, and you won't be able to mount them upside down underwater either. Spoil sports. And a static caboose has been added to the outpost, pretty much exactly where I thought it was going to be. Not that there was much choice. Now, look, there are quite a few other things being tweaked, and a lot of miscellaneous small fixes that I won't bore you with, but I'm sure they'll all contribute to a general overall feeling of quality in your life when this stuff all gets added in the next patch on December the 1st. And there will probably be a lot more to talk about in next week's news too, so join me then. Of course, a lot of other things are being worked on that are more long-term, which we shall get to when more info and visuals arrive. I'm really looking forward to seeing how industrial crafting pans out for one. Oh, and Charitable Rust last week apparently raised over $120,000 with more to come once skin cells are factored in, so well done, chaps. You are now totally up to date. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and check out my links below where you can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group, and you can also support the channel directly through Patreon, YouTube memberships, or via my merch store. All links are down below. I shall catch you soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. Oh, behave.